Hello, we're live from Roslav in Poland for the World Archery Youth Championships. It's the recurve medal matches and it's the under 21 juniors category. I'm Alec Wilkinson, Nikki Hunt's former world number one is with me in commentary. That is the field of play uh, where action will begin in a minute or two's time. And Nikki, how do you see conditions suiting the archers today, given what we enjoyed, what we saw in the early session? Yeah, conditions have been pretty good, quite warm. Um, at times, nice and light breeze, but we have had some gusts as well, so the archers really need to watch out for those. So 20 matches to come. We're bringing them to you all live over the next few hours here in the under 21 age category. We'll start with the women's team, then it's the men's teams, the mixed teams, and then we move on to the individuals, the women and then the men. So uh, plenty of action coming your way and we will also cover the bronze medal matches, which is what we're going to enjoy first here in Roslav. <laughs> And a lot of the archers who aren't competing are in the grandstand to support those who are, which is uh, a great thing and gives us also some uh, really good atmosphere despite the lack of uh, crowds because of COVID restrictions in Poland. I mustn't forget that these World Championships were planned for Australia, but because of COVID, uh, they've been moved to Poland who put up their hand and said, hey, we'll, we'll uh, carry the flag, we'll carry the mantle for archery. And Roslav decided to host the event. So here we go then, with the bronze medal match in the women's team event, it's Ukraine closest to us up against India. So the three Indian women, Bari, Punya and Verma. So introductions over, it's a battle for bronze. And they'll be uh, shooting over 70 metres, Nikki. That's right, yep. We're back to the set system again. So best of four sets for these teams. Each team shooting two arrows per set, each team member. And if you win a set, you get two points. If you draw the set, you get one point. So effectively, if you get to five, you win the match. many of these young competitors it is the biggest international stage they've appeared on can be quite daunting so India open up this session with a 10 Nisha Verma going second. And another ten for the Indian team. Barbara Ilyash going second for Ukraine 
Gets a nine. 17. So 25 for Ukraine. We have to await confirmation on uh, one of those early Indian arrows. That's the seven. seven. So final arrow for India. And it's a nine. So 51 total. Seventeen difference between the two teams. Two arrows to go, and that's a seven. So they need a ten to get a point from this set. Oh, it is! What a fine final arrow that was from the Ukraine. So the unofficial totals, 51 each. And we'll wait for some of those arrows to be confirmed. But if that is 51 each, then um, it's a point apiece. Your thoughts yeah, really on the early comeback. stages of this match, Nikki? Really good comeback by Ukraine <clears throat> with that 10 of the last arrow. You know, high-pressured arrow to try and steal some points back here and uh, they managed to deliver. See lots of bows in the area behind them. That's because there's no equipment failures in these eliminations. So if there was a problem with the boat, they can come back and grab another one. So points shared in that opening set. It's uh, one each. Waiting for the clock to counter down to start. Komali Kabari will get the second set underway. India also has a team in the men's team gold medal final. They'll also be represented in the mixed team final and in the women's individual. And central to that is, Bar is Komalika Bari woman who's shooting first for India. Eight. 
Varvara Ilyash now for Ukraine. 18 total. One more arrow from these three. Irina Tretyakova, who managed a 10 on her final arrow in the previous set to grab that point for Ukraine, but uh, couldn't come anywhere close to that this time. So 25 apiece it is, still nothing to separate these two. Most of the archers struggling a little bit with the left or right. That might be because we've had a little bit of wind coming from the left. Whether they're getting moved slightly to the right or I think the Ukrainians might even be over aiming off. from uh, no Marva. And that's a 10. So they're within eight points of India now. A nine will win the set for Ukraine. Tetrakiova with the shot. it's a nine so Ukraine go ahead we'll wait for confirmation of course as the judges go down and do a bit of measuring but uh, at the moment Ukraine look to have won that second set putting them 3-1 up in the match Collect their arrows and prepare for the third set with Ukraine 3 1 up. And a really impressive end to that second set by Ukraine. Three tens. In fact, they got four tens out of six shots in the second set. Kabari leading for India. She has an individual goal match as she tries to defend her under 18, well, her world title that she won at under 18 category two years ago at these same championships. It's an eight from her. 
That's actually the weakest arrow she's fired so far. long hold on that last shot for the Indians you get two minutes to shoot these arrows so they might have a little less time in the second segment that's right two minutes for all six arrows works out about 20 seconds an arrow which sounds long enough but uh, that time soon flies, as you say, Nikki, especially if you take too long or your teammates take too long on the earlier arrows. Just inflicts added pressure on you. So India just with the slightest of advantages. Usual to see an arrow like that from the Indian team. Nine. So fifty three is Ukraine's target. going to count as a 10 bringing them up to 45 9 to win the set and she gets it and the match. she's iced cool isn't she Tretiakova she wins the set and that is 2 points bringing it to 5-1 Job done for Ukraine. They didn't really let India in the door, did they? Leading from the second set. Taking the match 5-1. So our first medal in the under 21s has been won, it's by the Ukraine, 5-1 in three sets. And I think what the Ukrainians showed there Nikki was just how cool they can be under pressure. Yeah, they seem to deal with it really well, didn't they? Obviously, under 21 is slightly more experienced than the archers we watched this morning. Um, but they've come out here and really put on a good performance. You know, there is a little change in the wind out there. It's not easy. Um, they were able to adapt and shoot some good scores.
So congratulations to Ukraine. They win the bronze in the women's team event. India uh, missing out. India hugely successful in the under-18s uh, earlier on, getting uh, a couple of golds and three bronzes, and uh, bronze in the women's team for the under-18s, but not so for the under-21. So that leaves us to decide the gold and the silver medal uh, between Japan and Russia, and that match is next. So it's Japan against Russia for the gold and silver in the uh, women's team event in the under 21 category. Best of four sets, could go to five, could go to a shoot off. <laughs> As we've seen in the previous match, each set made up of six arrows per team, and they alternate every three arrows. So Japan to go first. So Juri Shibuya going second. these Japanese archers will have huge aspirations having watched the Olympic Games this month in their country they'll have huge aspirations of one day making it to the Olympic Games as well they don't look too concerned at the moment they don't seem to be feeling the pressure watching their teammate Fukawa pick up a bronze individual medal. Fantastic result for Japan. So a good first uh, group of arrows from Russia. Japan now playing catch up with their second set. Eight. 
Johnson. Stop. So that's an Japan picked up a medal in the under-18s in the men's team. That was their only medal in that age category. It's another 10. First set is going to go to Russia. Fifty one to forty five, so Russia go two nil up. So a pretty clinical performance from the Russians. Yeah, fairly good start. You know, 51 is probably on the lower end of what they'd expect, so they'll want to settle into this match too. Both teams perhaps a little bit nervous, getting used to the conditions here in the main stadium, and you know, we should see the scores going up. Communication between team members is really important as well, so you know, they'll want to be communicating about the conditions, what's going on, where did you aim, where did that arrow go, so that the next archer has the best information so they can get that arrow in the middle. They also might talk to each other through the shots as well, so phrases or words that they might find useful to help them keep moving and get through their clickers to get that shot moving. How does that work? Is that like trigger words? Yes, there might be a, a, a word that they associate with their shot movement or process um, and it's helpful sometimes if someone's saying that behind you and just helping you through that, especially under this pressure in these conditions. So, you know, the more these archers can work together as a team before the event, the better. title won by Korea in 2019. In fact the Koreans winning every team title in both the under 21s and under 18s in 2019. They're not here this time round. They chose to focus their attentions on the Olympic Games this year. Nice final, or oh, nice third shot from uh, the Japanese, giving them 27. Quite wide to the left, wasn't it? That seven. It was, yeah. Again, whether they're over aiming off or, you know, going to the left for a right-handed archer might be a release error. But 
Expect them ready to be in their gold. No issues for Sonoda. Japan's only chance at a medal in these under 21 recurve finals. Well, 55. That's a huge improvement on their first set. And they have taken the second set, so we are all square, two apiece. I can't come back but they can use these arrows to give them some confidence make sure their sights are set in the right place shoot some solid shots still all grouping high left just a sight adjustment there just to bring it in do they have to take those shots in theory I guess you, you could stop but you know, there's always a chance that there's a line cutter down there or something going on, and you're not aware of that as an archer. You, you know, you're not going to be aware of whether there's a line cutter on the, other, the opponent's target. So you take the shots. You know, it's the right thing to do. Um, you've got to perhaps, if, if you know you've already conceded, then just use them. You know, it's good practice. You're out there. There's no pressure. Just go through your shot process. Get yourself back into it. So the Russian teammates uh, shouting and encouraging their friends from the uh, from the crowd from the grandstand. The Japanese coming back, finding their form in that second set. So Japan scoring just 45 in the first set and Russia scoring just 46 in the second set. So I get yeah, the feeling thanks. that both yeah both teams just needing to settle a bit. That's right. All squared up to a piece. See who wants it more to win a world championship. First team to get the five set points. It's two apiece. Two for winning a set, one for a draw. group so many arrow holes up at that 10 o'clock red we've got to make adjustments we've got to move them into the gold
Five. Japanese dropping quite a few points with those last three arrows. 46 total. That's what Russia got in the second set. Lovely group. Could be so many more points, enough to take the set, but they need to make these adjustments. So how do they do that now? Does the coach help them with that? Well, they should be able to see where the arrows are going. Um, either they can look at the big screen or they could use the scope of the, uh, the coaches in the box. The coach is there to tell them and help them um, you know, where those arrows are going. So they should be aware of it. So they just either, either need to move their sights or they need to aim in a slightly different place. So if they're going high left and they're aiming in the middle, they probably need to aim, you know, low right, just opposite. I've been uh, intrigued by the, the coaching style and method um, at these youth championships. Um, for example, we're just watching the Japanese there. They've just lost a set. Seems to be lots of smiles. Uh, the coach having a little joke, you know, trying to keep them relaxed. Is that different for um, when you get to senior level? Um, I, I wouldn't say when there's more at stake, but are the coaches a little bit harder on, on their on their archers? You know, do they expect more from them and therefore put them under more pressure? I think at the end of the day, trying to stay relaxed and calm and smiling and happy is the best place to shoot arrows. You know, there's no real use having a go at them or telling them off or being hard on them at this point, you, you're just going to make it probably worse. I don't know. There's, there's probably a cultural differences somewhere in there of different styles of different people as well. But essentially, you know, just stay relaxed, keep calm and then shoot your normal shots. So if Russia win or draw this set, then they win the match. Japan know they've got to win this fourth set. Desa Vapova also uh, taking part in the mixed team medal matches. I'm interested by the style of that plaster on her chin. It's the first one we've seen at these championships who, who goes for that. Yeah, she's obviously got an irritation where, you know, on release the string is just uh, causing a little bit of pain. So using that is just going to ensure there's no pain really. 
When the, the bowstring is released, if you think about the fingers hooked around it, it gonna, it's going to go inward towards the archer first. So if you are anchoring even slightly down your chin, it's going to hit your chin on the way past. So Japan shooting now their final two arrows to stay in this match to force it to a fifth set. To nine, so 52 total for Japan. takes them to 41. Oh, it's a 10. Now, we're going to have to just wait for confirmation of those scores. Japanese waiting to find out if they've managed to force it to another set. So four, 52 to 49. Yeah, we are all tied up. Yeah, it's with four a three piece, point margin. Which means we are off to a tie. So it's our first tie break of the day. In the team round, what's going to happen now is each archer is going to shoot one arrow. They're going to alternate between the teams. And then at the end of that, the highest scorer will win. If we are tied on score, then it will go to the closest arrow to the centre. Nine, seven, 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 so if you think there's pressure already shooting in these matches, a shoot off is definitely even more pressure. Who's going to separate? You know, gold from silver. Who's going to take the world title? All down to one arrow each. They're changing the target faces in case of any close arrows where they'd have to measure to the middle. So, tiebreak about to get underway. Three arrows per team. Highest total score wins. It's 
still nothing between these two teams. That was one of our best arrows through the match so far. Great time to have it. Marina Gilmanova. It's another eight. So Russia on 16. Japan on 17. And would seal the deal. Another eight. Twenty five's the target. She gets the eight. So it's a victory for Japan. A real comeback from the Japanese who lost that first set. Lost the third set but came back to square the match in the fourth set to force a tie break. And it's the gold medal for Japan. Took it right to the wire, didn't they? They really did. It was really alternating. Great shooting and some, some wayward arrows. But they were strong enough to come through that tie break to win. That under 21 gold for Japan will go alongside their under 18 silver medal in the mixed team and will round off their total of uh, 21 uh, sorry two medals in the uh, two age categories in the recurve. And we will see Buddha Zapova uh, once more in the mixed team medal matches a little bit later on. But an absorbing contest from these two teams, from Japan and from Russia, to decide the gold and silver medals. Plenty more still to come here in Roslav with the men's team and the mixed team as well as the individual competitions as well. So our gold medalists are from Japan and we can hear from them now. Congratulations, you are the world champions. How does it feel? Uh, we are very happy. <laughs> it was a very difficult match for you. You had two bad sets and two very good and 
and there was a tie break. So what was the most important in that match? Ah, tie break になってすごく難しい状況だと思ったけどどうやってですか。えっとすごく緊張したんですけど仲間を信じて打とうと思いました。I'm very nervous, but we believe each other, and then we shoot confidently. That's what we believed. So was it difficult to motivate after you had like 45 in one set to come back? Ah, one set 目で45点取りましたけど、それでこう復帰したのはどういう風にされたんですか？とりあえず風を読んでしっかり風を見ながら仲間を信じて打ったら当たりました。Yeah, we 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 consider about the wind where it goes and we exchange the information each other and we believe each other and then we made it. So the Olympic Games were held in Japan. Now you won the World Youth Champion title. What does it mean for your future? The Olympic でもなんかこういい成績を残して、で今回見逃されましたけど、あの将来に向けてあのこれどういう意味を持ちますか？経験経験の一つとして、やっぱりね。まあ今回の試合は風もあって難しかったんですけど、この決勝に出れたいい経験を生かしてパリにつなげていきたいなと思います。So this game was very difficult and the wind is very very difficult, but we had a good experience and then win the game and then we want to take this experience to the Paris Olympic and. We want to go on the party. Okay, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So, gold for Sonodo, Watanabe, and Shibuya of Japan. Obviously, uh, three very happy women who've taken that gold medal for Japan. And uh, they continue uh, along their Olympic journey with an eye on Paris 2024. And we will celebrate their win very shortly with the medal ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the Lekku Junior Women Team. So our bronze medal winners, Ukraine, lead out the gold and silver medalists. First medals in the under-21 category here at the World Youth Championships. will be presented by World Archery Executive Board member, Eva Tessen. Bronze medal, medal bronze Ukraine. Barbara Ilias, Zanna Naumova, Irina Tripiakova, Silver Medal, Medal Srebrny. 
Russian Federation. Juliana Ruzadatova. Maria Gimanova. Victoria Mandakova. Possibility of medals for Russia in the uh, men's individual and in the mixed team as well. Gold medal, swat medal, Japan. But congratulations to the Japanese, Sonoda, Watanabe and Shibuya, who take our first gold in the under-21 category in the recurve. Vaka Sonoda. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand up for the national anthem of Japan. Panie i panowie, proszę wstać do odsłuchania hymnu narodowego Japonii. Thank you very much. So our medal winners make their way from the podium and coming up next in the under 21 recurve it's the men's team bronze and gold medal matches. Thank you. 
Continue our live coverage from Wroclaw in Poland of the World Archery Youth Championships 2021. And up right now is the bronze medal match in the men's team under 21 recurve. And the judges are out, and very soon we will see our two teams from the USA. And following them onto the field are Italy. Nikki Hunt with me in commentary once again, former world number one. And a similar setup for the men as we've had for the women over 70 metres. Okay, so here we go with the junior men's team round. It's going to be best of four sets. Each archer shooting two arrows per set. If you win the set, you get two points. If you draw it, you get one. So the magic number here is five points. So USA to open this match. Junsu O oh is going to open for the Americans, and it's a nine. USA, very strong nation in archery, of course. Didn't win a medal in the under 18s recurve, however. So it's a nine for the first Italian arrow. So we're having some uh, problems with the uh, pictures there, the live pictures coming to us from Poland. So we'll, we will keep an eye out on the scoring and uh, keep you up to date with that until we try and sort out the uh, technical problems. Unfortunately, we can't bring you any of the uh, live action for the moment, but hopefully we will put that right very quickly. So some technical issues with our live feed from uh, Roslav in Poland and uh, we're trying to sort that out as quickly as we can so that we can get back to the match between Italy and USA as they 
try and decide which of the teams will take the bronze in the men's team competition. Trying to regain that live feed with Roslav in Poland for this uh, World Archery Youth Championships. And I think we may have briefly established a connection with them, with uh, Italy in action against the USA. And the USA getting 55 in the first set and Italy just finishing off their first set uh, their first six arrows of the first set so it looks like uh, that first set going to the USA 55 to 50 Clearly, a few gremlins uh, working away in our systems. loud when you've got the Italy supporters behind you <laughs> and I'm sure the American supporters will do just as loud back yes the other team members uh, creating a really good atmosphere here despite the lack of crowds but stadiums empty stadiums we've kind of got used to these days So the USA 2 nil up after the first set. And that's a 9 from Matteo Bilizari, 19 year old, Federico Novati. Francesco Gregori with the third arrow, bringing Italy's total to 26. John Su O oh now managed two nines in the previous set, and this time it's a 10. has a very slow sort of methodical draw doesn't he yeah there's plenty of different styles and techniques out there and if he's working with uh, Kisik Lee the top American coach tend to draw slightly outward Mm -hmm. 
I've noticed how few archers in these uh, youth competitions are wearing sunglasses or, or glasses at all. Um, is it difficult to find a pair that don't affect your vision when you're looking down the uh, down the range? Yeah, because the arches are sort of turned, you're almost looking over the bridge of your nose. So a lot of glasses, um, like the frame and the nose piece, can get in the way. Um, quite a lot of, uh, I'd say, Korean archers as well use the glasses. So um, obviously a little bit easier fitting, perhaps. And like the the um, the sun hasn't really played a factor here unless you're left-handed. This archer is more looking towards the sun, but for most archers, um, they've tended to be looking away from the sun. You can see how much longer Cows's um, arrow was. He's obviously the tallest in the team. So that was a nine, and if those scores are confirmed, that puts the USA 4 nil up. What a difference in state of the archers and their body language. Americans obviously using the support of the crowd, getting pumped up by it. We often see that with their team. The Italians looking a little bit despondent at the moment. Yes, they're 4-0 down, but they've got to get back into this match. Set system here so if they can win the next set, get right back into this. Yeah, I suppose the coach will be reminding the Italians they were only a point off the uh, off that set, so it was 53 to 52, the final score of set two. You know, one better placed arrow would have made the difference. Now, both these countries have you know, a rich Olympic history and medal winning history as well. Um, you coach uh, a lot of young archers. How important do you think Olympic success is for those coming through? How, how much of an inspiration is that? Within their, their own nation? Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, it's important to see people above you going all the way through the system um, to inspire you and show you that it can be done but you know if you've got an Olympic dream just got to go for it you've got to do everything you can to get the people around you to make the best of of what you have so so few people get to the Olympics 64 places men and 64 places for women so to get there is an absolute privilege and you know it's a, a highly sought after place to be So, the USA two up on uh, Italy in this set. Italy three remaining arrows. They've had a ten, a seven, and an eight. A 
need to win this set to Italy. So, final nine for a final arrow. That's a total of 50. That matches their first set score. And that, if things go as they have been in this match, that won't be enough to stop the USA taking the bronze medal. So a seven brings them to 43. There's a, an arrow that needs checking on the Italian target, but that's a nine for the USA and that puts them ahead of Italy and should be enough to give them the bronze medal. Now we just wait for that confirmation. Yes, it is. So it was 52 to 51 in the end, and the USA take the bronze medal. Italy not managing to win a set. So a straight sets victory. 6 0 to the USA. Are you sure that's Coach Kisek Lee with them right there? Made a huge impact on archery in the USA. And around the world. So the USA make their way from the field and in their place we will have Spain and India come to fight it out for the men's team gold and silver medals. So we're ready to go for the gold medal match in the men's team under 21 recurve final. We we'll meet Spain with Yun Sanchez, who will also be in the mixed gold match. Match is Christina 
So the two team supporters creating plenty of atmosphere for them. Spain picked up a medal in the under 18s in the men's team. It was the bronze. But they can go at least one better here in the under 21s. So past Sushant Salunke getting an eight with India's first arrow. Thirty-five for India's first three arrows. Yun Sanchez, potentially this could be a very good day for him. This is his first of two gold medal matches at these championships. Hold, popping up high. Jose Manuel Solera with the third arrow for Spain. To six, twenty-three. So a good start from Sanchez, but not so good from the following archers. Aditya Chowdhury being encouraged by his teammate Poma Devara. Good shot. Seven. <laughs> Did he say not bad? I think it started with good shot, not bad. <laughs> I was going to be positive. <laughs> so forty seven, Spain's target in this first set. Way to go for Sanchez. That's two tens for him. Well, he went quite high with the first arrow, almost exactly as low with the second. It's probably made an adjustment, perhaps didn't need to. So, final eight. So, 49 to 47 to be confirmed. So at least one cross liner on the uh, Indian target. It's always difficult to gauge the teams, isn't it, from the uh, first set? 
yeah, you know, they've come across from the uh, the practice venue and it might be slightly different conditions there to here. So sometimes it takes them an hour or two just to get their sights set properly or know how to react to the wind conditions. We've talked a lot about that over this weekend. That sometimes the wind completely drops, but other times we're getting this left to right wind, which is moving those flags and the wind socks down the field and the archers are having to aim off sometimes. And you know, for archers, that's probably the worst most difficult conditions when it keeps changing you know if there's a consistent wind it's not too bad you can change your sights keep aiming at the middle but when it's changing you've really got to be alert to that so uh, those scores confirmed 49 for Spain in that first set 47 for India uh, so 2-0 to Spain to Spain So that two minute countdown begins for each of the teams. That's two minutes to get away all six arrows. No change in the order of shooting for India then. Roma Devara getting a, a good 10 to finish off those that group of three. That's his third 10 of the match. So three good shots from Spain, matching the ten and two nines of India, twenty-eight all. for India. Well, that's a great score, 58. Sanchez, he's in fine form, isn't he? He really is. Four tens out of his four arrows so far. Unfortunately, that is the set slipped away. So Spain just need to regroup now. 
India have come back strong in the second set. Massive turnaround from the first. So a convincing victory in that second set from India. And Hume Sanchez for Spain in, in great form, but it's it's the rest of the team that need to find that centre circle, isn't it? Yeah, just trying to settle into the match, calm their nerves, be confident in where they're aiming as well. Salunke of India and he will be facing this man Yun Sanchez in the mixed team gold medal match a little bit later on So here we go again, all square. It's like starting from scratch. Two sets gone, two to go. Three nines for India. Well, let's see if we. Eat. If uh, Sanchez can continue with his 100% score. Ooh, just short of the 10. Commentator's curse, I think. Blame that on you. <laughs> I think, actually, in, in his mind, he thought he'd got it at first. He wasn't far out. Probably felt like a good shot. Just slightly low. nine again for him so 45 one final arrow from Bomber Devara so 54 total
Oh, that's a 10, just when they needed it. So, 9 to draw the set. And he gets the 9. So, he matches India's score of 54. Not sure if there were any contentious issues there. I think... Let the judges go and have a look, but uh, yeah, that should be a drawn set. Yeah, there didn't look to be any line cutters, so expecting 54 all. Split set points between them, bringing them up to three sets each. So this fourth and final set is literally just going to be all to play for, so taking the win here, really important. If they did tie again, it would force a shoot off. Stadium, uh, you can imagine what it'd be like if it was full of archery fans, wouldn't you? Just how noisy and atmospheric it would be, quite intimidating. I mean, it's great as it is, just with the teams supporting their their teammates. But Roslav has played host to many big sporting events over the years. It was a venue for the uh, Euros in 2012, football, UEFA Football Championships. So, pressure's on. It's three all. We're into the final set. Whoever wins this set will win the gold medal in the men's team event. A little while ago, the bronze went to the USA. But here... Salunka gets India underway in this final set. Chowdhury now. Well, that's going to need looking at, isn't it? Do you think that was on the line? I think both of those first two shots are going to need looking at. They're just going for the line cutters here. They do touch the line, they'll get the highest score. It's a 10, it's no doubt about that one. <laughs> so 27 from India's first three arrows. And a 10. Sanchez's service resumes. Oh, little flinch towards the end. Yeah, high into the six. He just felt his clicker. I think just came down a little bit microscopically. Felt a bit of pressure, a little flinch, and then struggled with that one. Sanchez has a very expressive face. You can <laughs> tell what he's thinking, and he wasn't impressed by his teammates' six there. He tries not to show it, but he could just see the frustration on his face. I think they were a bit lucky with that one, it looked like it hit the arrow in the 10, glanced out into the 9. Oh, 
Oh, nice shot. Nice final shot for India. So, 54. It's at least a 55. First, and they definitely had 28 as a minimum, maybe even 30. So two tens needed to force a shoot off. Ah. Final arrow of Solera. And it's a ten, a fine arrow it was too. But it's not enough. And yes, we will wait for confirmation. But that final set looks like it's gone to India. They've India definitely the got winners. it, just That's by how many confirmed. points. So it's a 5-3 victory to India. And Spain will have to make do with silver. And still, what an achievement that is. So Salunke Chowdhury and Pomodavara really putting on a, a great show against a strong Spanish team. But I think what it was, Nicky, was this consistency within their team. They were all pretty strong. Felt Spain at times were carrying one or two of their players. Yeah, both had a shaky start, didn't they? Coming in and then India just ran away with it really through the, the next two sets and taking a really good win there to be world champions in the men's team under 21. So a golden victory in the men's team event for India on their Independence Day. And they add that to the five medals that the country won in the under 18 recurve category. What we've seen, Nikki, at these uh, Youth World Championships really is a very strong uh, Indian side, you know, real strength in depth. Uh, how much can we read into that as far as the future is concerned? I'll ask you that question in a moment because I want to hear from the winners first. Huge congratulations, Thank you. Youth World Champions, Deraj. How does it feel? It feels really great. Actually, we play for our country and today is more special because of our Independence Day. And we did it. We, uh, we did very great and we shoot very well We uh, of our hard work. And it's uh, really happy for us, for all of our team who supported us and all of our coaches, staff who supported us. We are really happy and there are no words to say. And more to go for mixed team goal and individual goal. And we will be uh, take all the goals and uh, fly our flag higher in our special Independence Day. Aditya, it was a very close match. What was yeah. the most important at the end of the match to keep focused? Yeah, too bad. Ball day, oh, close match, uh, to match ball. It close, match eh? was very close, but it was my team sport and the confidence that pulled me up to up to that I can shoot my best. Yeah. Part you won gold medal on in your Independence Day. It must be huge for you. Yes, it is a. Uh, Proud to shoot for nation, especially today is our Independence Day on 15th August. So I feel really good, and we did well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. So a very happy Indian uh, men's team winning the uh, gold there. 
And I was saying, Nikki, yeah, how much can we read into their success here at the Youth Games as far as, you know, the future is concerned? Yeah, I think, you know, it's a definitely good things ahead for India. Um, you talked earlier about role models and uh, Topeka Kamari, women's world number one, uh, is an Indian lady. She's top of the game um, and won three gold medals at the third Hyundai World Cup stage this year. Uh, one with her husband, the Tanu Das. Uh, so they've got incredible role models in front of them and an incredible team coming through. You know, this World Championships have taken so many medals. So we're going to see a lot more from them, I'm sure. And we'll see them on the podium very shortly as we await the medal ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the Raccoon Junior Man Team. Are you going to be a ceremony of Raccoon Junior Man Team? Category Raccoon Classic Concurrency Drusen Junior. USA with their first medal in the recurve event. So bronze for the USA trio. Spain step up after a hard-fought uh, gold medal match against uh, India. They'd lost 5-3 in the end, but it was a good performance, an exceptional performance from Yoon Sanchez on the left there, and we will see more of him later in the mixed team event. victory from them and we've heard just how pleased they were with that victory on India's Independence Day and they add that gold medal to the gold medal in the men's team event for the under 18s earlier on in the day.
Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause to our athletes. Panie i panowie, proszę o gorące brawa dla naszych sportowców. So that concludes the men's team event and the women's team event and that leaves one more team event to come. It is of course the mixed team in this under 21 age category. We're sticking with recurve right through to the end of this uh, championship now. And the bronze medal match will be coming up next. The gold will be coming up straight after that. And so it's Russia versus Germany for the bronze medal match in a few moments. Please welcome the coaches and judges to the field of play. Coverage coming from Roslava in Poland for the World Archery Youth Championships. And it's time now for the medal matches in the mixed team under 21 recurve. It's the bronze medal match first. It's Russia against Germany. Germans represented by Elena Edenson and Jonathan Better. Is a Bova, who we saw win a medal in the world in the women's team event. On target number two, representing Germany, Elina Idensen, Jonathan Vector, the line judge of this match is Denis Paquet. So, so here we go Nikki with Hunt the mixed still team. with me. Yes, in commentary. Off you go, Nikki. <laughs> We're going to be shooting the mixed team round now. So it's the same format in that it's a best of four sets. Each archer shooting two arrows each. If you win the set, you get two points. If you draw it, only one. So the magic kind of score here is they get to five points. They have won.
So Germany to go first. Uh, Jonathan Vetter, 20 years old, and starts with a nine. His teammate, Alina Edenson, 18 years old. Both of them pretty successful on the European youth circuit. And what a way to start for her. So Bianto Osorov. Starts with a 10. No sign of nerves from him. Kudazapova. Already got a silver from the women's team event. So all square after the first couple of arrows. So twenty eight the target for Russia. I think they're on thirty six. Just hasn't been updated. Well spotted. I was actually trying to check how tall Veta is because he really looks very tall indeed. And we were talking about height limits. And that's another 10 from uh, the Russian wait to have those scores confirmed but uh, it looks like that could be a first Russian uh, first set going to Russia yeah I don't think he's tall enough to worry about <laughs> in terms of you know we, we spoke a bit earlier around kind of limitations of um, an archer, I suppose, and you know, if you are very tall, and I mean, I probably said six very foot two nice. earlier, and it's probably even taller than that. Uh, the limitations for arrows, I think, the longest they come in some of the um, brands is like, oh, I think, like thirty-three inches or something like that. Might might be one of the longest lengths. So, you know, if if you're longer than that, if you've got a longer span and draw <laughs> than that, then you start to have issues but I don't think that's going to be an issue for better. Yeah, I think it was to be fair the camera angle <laughs> because and now we've seen him standing up against his his coach and also we've, uh, we've been doing the under 18s um, earlier on in the day so <laughs> so not, not the biggest athletes out on the uh, on the field. <laughs> You made a good point earlier about the sun 
sort of coming in from that right hand side making it difficult for left handers I'm just wondering how low it goes as the evening draws on here in Roslav yeah it might be an irritation to to some left-handed archers and that's why you know most of them have either got a hat or all the can shooting glasses you've always got to have an option for that in case you shoot. sometimes we end up shooting towards the sun then it really is an issue Better just talking her through it. So Germany are 9 and 8, a 10 and an 8, they're sitting on 35. Smashed by the Russians. So all square in that set. Archers just checking over their arrows that have come back, making sure there's no damage before they shoot them again. Yeah, I'm just getting a call on the Russian arrow here. thought it was it starred uh, did look well in well, let's have a look now we're going yeah so Russia's arrow has been upgraded so instead of splitting the points with 35 piece Russia have taken the second set, 36 to 35, 4 0 up. So a tie in this set would be enough for Russia to take it. Germany have got to get themselves on the board. up a few gold medals on the European Youth Cup circuit, Edenson, but can she help her teammate to salvage something here against the Russians? are off second 10 of the match so all square in this third set Jonathan Vetter who will also be competing for a bronze in the men's individual that's coming up later uh, but he gets an eight
So a nine for Germany's final arrow of this set, giving them a total of 36. Yep, 36. Just checking that. Yeah, a nine, a 10, an eight, and a nine. Eight for Osarov. Gets the nine, and that squares the set, and that will be enough to take the victory. We await confirmation of the scores. So Russia celebrate a bronze medal in the mixed team, un, uh, mixed team event in the under 21s, and it was 5-1 victory in the end to the Russians. Uh, Zapova adds a bronze to her silver from the women's team event. And the first medal for Osarov. A disappointment for Germany. We'll, we'll go home empty-handed, but Vetter does have a chance to win a bronze once again in the men's individual later on in the day. So let's get underway the mixed team gold medal match. It's Spain against India. So these under 21 arches are going to be shooting at 70 meters on a 122 centimeter face, exactly the same as the senior Olympic distance as well. I think this is going to be quite some match. Spanish have got so much experience between them and India are here on their Independence Day to take every gold they can. They've got a massive crowd behind them. It's going to be a great match. Some hugely experienced archers here. And Elia Canal is 20 years old from Spain. She's won five medals already at international level. And she starts the action off for Spain. Yun Sanchez next. He's already got a silver from the men's team event. And he was on fire in that event. Performing very well, very confidently. Just, just checking 
with the coach. Where did those errors go? What adjustments do they need to make? Both going to that left. On the line. So ten for Canales. <laughs> Matched by her teammate. Well, they had a bit of a chat with the coach, didn't they, after their first two arrows. I don't know what they changed, but it, it worked for them. Yeah, it may have just been a simple change of the sight mark. You know, they've come in, first arrow from the Indians is also to the left, so whether the conditions, like I say, from here, from the practice field are slightly different. Nine to draw the set. It's an eight. Awesome. We're so going to need to wait on this though. Because yeah. that last arrow of Spain I thought was terribly close. They've, they've put it down as a ten, but I thought it was really quite close to the line. Yeah, they've started on the scoreboard out there. So we're going to have to wait for confirmation again. Looks like it's been upgraded. Upgraded to a 10. To a 10. So that gives them 36 to India's 35. Yeah. Well, as we watch the replays, we await the confirmation that has now just come through. So Spain win that set 36 to 35. So they go. 2-0 up. Solunke, already a gold medal winner in the men's team event here. Now Komali Kabari, she just missed out on a medal in the women's event coming fourth. That'll put extra fire in her belly to come away with a medal here. And will it be gold or will it be silver? India have got this lovely group on the left. I just saw a change of sight there a little bit, but they've got to move them over. Nine. 
Mm. Nothing right at the target at all yet, I don't think. Right of centre. So Spain with two tens from the first arrow. For Canales, nine. and it's a nine for Sanchez. So that brings their total to 37, and once again we're all square. Time to double check the arrows. So a drawn second set then, 37 points to 37. Spain still leading by two points. The score now, 3-1 to the Spanish. Third set with India looking to close that two point gap on Spain. Nine, Nine for Salunka. Komalika Bari now. She's becoming a, a fixture on the international circuit at senior level as well. Now she's been chosen for the Indian senior team this season. So all square, I remember a win for Spain in this set will give them the match. This is an appetizer for the women's individual goal match. Bari will be taking on Canales in that. So 38. And that's a nine. So it's out of reach. So India, barring uh... yep. So India have uh, squared the match. That's what it's all about, isn't it, Nikki? It's just about holding your nerve. You look, you can be so close in this in, when you're uh, when you're 
you know, using sets, you can be so close. Uh, rather than the compound where it's all about totals, with sets, uh, you can look like you're down and out, but then you can slowly start coming back. It's about that having that mental strength to do it. Absolutely. You know, if you have a bad shot, you can push the reset button truly and really come back in the next set. Whereas compound, if you make a bit mistake, yeah, there's a big mark on your scorecard with the raw score going all the way through the match. So it's more difficult to come back. It's still possible. Um, but it's a great skill to have for these archers. You know, we're not robots. We're not perfect. We can't shoot tens every time. So if it doesn't go how you want it to, being able to, to literally push that reset button, get back into the match. So fourth and final set, whichever team wins this set wins gold. If it's a draw, then we go to a, a shoot off. Great time to shoot two tens for India. Nine, so it's a total of 34 for Spain. It's just 14 for India. So 15. 15 for gold. It's nine. So India really ending strongly. This arrow for the gold medal. And it's a 10. And what a way to go out. What a way to win gold by hitting the gold in the center of the target. Terrific performance. And what a comeback. What a comeback, Nikki, for India. 2 0 down, 3 1 down, 3 3. And then to seal it, 5 3. They just got more and more consistent, didn't they? 35, 37, 38, 39 out of a possible 40. Really great shooting from them, and they are the world champions. What do you think um, Spain will take away from that match, apart from obviously disappointment? Um, but what do you think they could learn? You know, I think there were some really good areas in there. Um, I think they, they just shifted around and moved around a little bit. I think when the pressure was on, unfortunately that severed in the, in the last set. It just set the tone, didn't it, for the last set. So, you know, being in these conditions under pressure as much as possible, just strengthening your shot and your process as much as possible. And, you know, it's kind of not as easy said as done, is it? You know, you've got to get out there and be in these high-level competitions regularly. And that's been a challenge through the pandemic, but what a great experience to be here. And they're fantastic archers also on the senior circuit as well. So 
I think we'll be seeing some of them at the Senior World Championships in Yankton in September. Yep, without a doubt. And we'll be seeing these two women as well in a short while in the uh, gold medal match for the women's individual. So that uh, sets up a nice mouth-watering tie for us to look forward to next. So India get the gold and Spain take their second silver uh, of the under-21s competition after their silver in the men's team. And it, in the end, it was Russia with the bronze. Well, let's hear from our world champions now. Huge congratulations. You are young for champions in mixed part. You started a bit slow, but the, your finish as a team was perfect. Is that what matters? I think it's all about process. I couldn't handle my process in the team event, but in the mixed team event, I did quite well. That's all. Komarika, does, that last arrow was exceptional. It was brilliant. Uh, yeah, I also thought that it was brilliant and I showed really nice. And it's a great honor for us that we make our Indian India proud in this occasion of Independence Day. As today we have our Independence Day. And yeah, we are feeling very great. It must be very important also ahead of your individual match. Yeah, I think it's my experience so that I can carry in my individual match. And it was a great match. Thank you very much. Congratulations once again. Thank you. So congratulations to them. Hey, do you think it might be India's Independence Day today? <laughs> they have been absolutely loving every medal today to help them celebrate that uh, very important day for their country. And uh, they have taken two golds now. And in a short while, we will see them step on to that podium there in the center with the big number one on. And it'll be another opportunity for them to celebrate. executive board member Eva Tessen. So Buda Zapova of Russia taking her second medal of these championships. It's bronze in the mixed team to add to her silver in the women's team event. who's going for the individual goal later on and Yun Sanchez who's already got a silver from the men's team adds a second silver for these championships Don't 
And after a terrific comeback from losing the first set, 2-0, two, 3-1, two 3-3, three, three, three. they came back to win the match 5-3. Komalika Bari and Path Sushant Salunke. And that's Salunke's second gold medal of these championships. So our mixed team medalists make their way from the field and that concludes the team events at these World Archery Youth Championships. And that just leaves us two more events to conclude in the recurve. It's the under 21s, women's individual. We've got the bronze match coming up, the gold match, of course, as well. And then it's the men's under 21 individual in the recurve. And those are coming up in just a moment. Live coverage from Roslav in Poland for the World Archery Youth Championships. I'm Alec Wilkinson with Ms. Nikki Hunt, former world number one. 
and uh, we've watched some thrilling matches over the last uh, couple of days. Um, we're down to the last four now, starting with the bronze medal match in the women's individual. And so we've had team events all the way through the afternoon here in Roslav. Um, Nikki, how will this have a different feel? So yeah, into the individuals now, so slightly different system. On target number two, representing the United States of America, Casey Siofon. The line charge for this match is Christina Ingridu. So it's a slightly different system. Um, still still a set system but it's now best of five sets so the golden number really here is the first of six points archer's going to shoot three arrows a set alternating between each other if you win the set you get two points if you draw the set you get one so charlene schwartz of germany up against casey kofold uh, both olympians from tokyo 2020 Casey Carfold, only 17 years old. The American, a real force to be reckoned with for the future. Schwartz starts the ball rolling with a 10. the American. Wow. Schwartz going to make this a perfect start. She does. Three tens. What a way to start the competition. It literally doesn't get any better than that, does it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Schwartz, not only uh, an Olympian, uh, but she picked up an Olympic bronze team medal as well in Tokyo. So I imagine she's on just cloud nine right now and keeping that good form all the way through the Youth World Championships as well. So already Proving herself uh, in the senior world, Charlene Schwartz. She says that her first bow was um, four pounds and shot just three meters. You think, wow. And then you realize she was only three years old when she started at her local archery club, and she's been hooked ever since. Well, she's in the driving seat right now after a perfect start to this bronze medal match. Ooh, another ten. Bit of Boquondo trying to move that arrow across, but a bit too late. And an eight now for Schwartz. Okay. 
Enrolled uh, in the German police sports team and gets another 10, so 28. And she is on fire, she's uh, great form. Charlene Schwarz. So, how does Casey Kofold come back from this? Well, we're in the set system, so you've just got to push that reset button, take a deep breath, just try and calm those nerves, get yourself back to your normal shots, your normal process. So, she just doesn't seem to have found the middle yet. Um, arrows, I think, were high the first end, a little bit left the second, so just needs to settle in, trust her aiming point, and make good shots. So Casey Kerfold of uh, the USA desperately needs to win this set. That's a good start to a fight back. So, victory in this set for Schwartz seals the match. Same error as last time, low right. So, an 8, so 27. So, a 9. A nine will draw the set. A ten from Schwarz, and she's shot enough of them already, will win the bronze medal. And this time it's an eight. So 26. And now there is a glimmer of hope for the American. far as the quarterfinals, the women's team quarterfinals at uh, Tokyo 2020. Her father, Rob, represented the uh, USA in archery as well, as did her mother. And they will be watching from home and willing her on she's back in it now 4-2 she's clinging on Victory for Schwarz in this set will win her the match and the bronze medal. Kofold can carry on and force it to a fifth set if she draws or wins. Thank 
Nine to draw, ten for victory, and it's a ten. Schwartz takes the set. We have to wait to get that confirmed, but she takes the set, and with it, the bronze medal. A dominant performance, Nikki. Really, really was, wasn't it? You know, lots and lots of tens, a few errors with the eights, a little bit low right, but wow, really, really good shooting from, from both of them, to be fair. Um, the Schwartz taking the bronze medal at the World Championships. Bronze medal at the World Championships to go with her bronze Olympic medal in the team event at Tokyo 2020. It's been quite a year for her, hasn't it? Absolutely amazing. I'm sure we'll see her at the Senior World Championships in Yankton to come as well. We should uh, mention Casey Coffold as well. Um, yes, beaten fairly comprehensively here 6-2, but just 17 years old, three years less experienced than her opponent here, and you know, still put up a great fight and put some great arrows. In. Yeah, she's got several more years left on the circuit, hasn't she? So, um, I'm sure she'll be back in two years' time to uh, come and claim, I would think, a gold medal she'll be looking for. So the first medal for Germany in the under-21s recurve and it's a bronze medal in the women's individual. Who will win gold and silver? It'll either be an Indian or a Spaniard. And here they come now, Bari Comalica and Elia Canales of Spain. Taken a silver medal here. And just a mention of the judges, because um, we talk a lot about their decisions. Um, are they on the on the circuit uh, professionally? Are they um, volunteers? How does it work? I don't know the ins and outs of whether they're professional or, or they volunteer. To be honest with you, I believe that their expenses are paid uh, by World Archery, but I'm not. I'm not sure if they're actually paid as well or not. But they have to go through a series of, uh, you know, uh, sort of qualifications to get to this level. Well, they do a very good job, and what a good job Canalis has done with her first arrow. Big cheer from her teammates in the grandstand. These two women last met in the mixed team gold medal match and Canales here came off second best with the silver. Is she going to be able to turn that around and get the better this time of Bari?
So Kanala's, you know, she couldn't have been any closer to getting to Tokyo. She was in the last European continental qualifier and uh, she got all the way through to the bronze medal match but so did her compatriot Inz Di Velasco. The Spanish team sent them both into the bronze medal match without a coach to fight it out for who would make Tokyo. Sadly, Alaya came off second in that match but look at her now, she's picked herself right back up. She's reaffirmed her goals for this season. She wants to be world champion and here she is. So, Canales, 2-0 up after the first set. Bari playing catch-up. Youth world champion, under 18 world champion, gets a 9 with her first arrow of the second set and that is matched by Canales. To nine, three nines, twenty seven, nine to draw, and that's a nine. So all square in that set, three one, the overall score. Lots of talk and communication between coach and athlete on both sides. Just directing their focus. Yeah. Just staying very calm, aren't they? That's it. Yep, three nines for both women. And a big smile from Canales, silver medalist at the Youth Olympic Games in Buenos Aires in 2018. Seems a long time ago now. coach and goes yes your advice works <laughs> oh anything you can do I can match says Canales the set for Bari. She wins this set, brings them equal overall. So that, barring uh, obviously waiting for confirmation, but that is the set for Bari. And that brings the overall score to three all.
So two tens and a nine, bringing 29 for Bari. It was a 10 and eight and a nine for Canales. 27. Well, now she's smiling. Now the pressure's a little bit off. And they have to start again. Three sets, three, three. So here we go with the fourth set. each other arrow by arrow. It's almost gladiatorial isn't it Nikki? Absolutely. <laughs> this is what I love about the shoot-offs you know what Archie brought this in many years ago now but it really is a head-to-head. them and she gets the 10 giving her 29 to Canales's 27 and that now puts Barry in the driving seat Barry has come from behind, put on a great fight back to lead 5-3 going into the final set. Canales needs to win this final set to force a tiebreak shoot-off. Not the start she wanted. Eighteen after two arrows. Final arrow. And it's a 10. She could do no more with that final arrow, bringing her total to 28. And now it's in the hands of Bari. It's a 10 and it's victory. It's a gold medal. It's gold for India's Komalika Bari. And a fantastic performance, her second gold of these championships. And she celebrates with her coach, her coach who really helped her out after, the, uh, after that first set, told her just to calm down, gave her a little bit of advice, and that began the comeback. And it's quite reminiscent of how uh, Bari 
and her partner won the gold in the mixed team event. They started badly, but they came back from behind. And that's what she's now done to win gold in the women's individual. And a thought for Canalis as well, Nikki, because, um, you know, she certainly deserved to be in that gold medal match. She's put in some fine performances this week. Yeah, she really has. And she didn't shoot badly. 27, 27, 27, 20, 28. So, you know, not a bad performance by her, but Bari was just too strong. You know, she had a slow start, 26, 27, but three back-to-back -back 29s. Just awesome shooting from her and a well-deserved world champion. So let's hear from our gold medal winner now. <laughs> Not quite ready. But uh, we're going to try again. We do want to hear from uh, Kamalika Bari celebrating her gold medal here in the women's individual event 7-3 the final score let's try again Komalika congratulations from cadet champion two years ago to junior world champion is it a mission accomplished for you yeah it's a great great happiness for me and I'm feeling very nice feeling very happy that I achieved this medal also and now I'm great champion also, junior champion also. <laughs> Attempt to win the match, was that your difficult or hardest hero to shoot today? Yes, at starting she won the set and I was like, <laughs> now I have to shoot well. And while focusing on my process, I did the best. Komalika Dipika did this 10 years ago here in Poland and now you're taking that title. Are you the new star of India? Uh, I don't think so, yes, I'm in the process to be the star, but I think there are a lot of archers who can get motivation from this and I want many archers to become more junior champions, more current champions so that India would be top. And yeah, today is, as you know, our Independence Day and I think it's a great gift from my side to my country. And you're going to the Senior World Championships in a few weeks' time, how does this prepare you for that? Yes, I'm going in the senior championship and I think this experience could help me a lot there and I will do my best there also. Thank you and congratulations, Kamalika. Thank you very much. Oh, I think she's already proved that she will be a force to be reckoned with in that, uh, that senior level and in those championships that are coming up. So it's gold for Bari and in a moment we will present the medals to our three winners in the women's individual under 21 category.
So it's a youth world bronze for Charlene Schwarz of Germany, 20 years old. And Olympic medal winner at Tokyo 2020 in the women's team for Germany. There's bronze at Tokyo as well. It's bronze here in Poland. The second silver of these championships after a mixed team silver medal. And that goes alongside her bronze in the 2019 uh, World Youth Championships in the team event. So three World Youth medals for Elia Canales. Kumari Kabari becomes only the second Indian woman to hold the under-18 and under-21 world title. And you know, she's done it exactly 10 years after Deepika Kumari did exactly the same, completed that double in Lignitscha, which is just about an hour's drive away from this very venue here in Poland. team begin their celebratory shouts from the grandstand we're getting quite used to them they've won four of the five golds available in the under 21s the women's individual the mixed team the men's team as well so three of those four and Spain have won three of the four silver medals available so it's been a great day for those two countries and we have two more medal matches yet to come it's in the men's individual and we'll start with the bronze and then we'll find out who will be our world champion after that. So the men's individual bronze medal match gets underway in a few moments time.
please welcome the coaches and judges to the field of play. So time now to meet our competitors for the bronze medal in the men's individual in the under 21 recurve. Buyanto Osarov of Russia in the red and he leads out Jonathan Vetter of Germany. On target number one, representing Germany. So the format is as you will be used to, three arrows per set. And it's the uh, best of five sets. So the first to score six points will win the bronze medal. But this is a real grudge match because these two have met already this afternoon and they met in the mixed uh, bronze medal match. It was won by the Russian and it was done in straight sets. So for Veta, this is very much a case of revenge. to wait to find out if that's an eight or a nine. Two tens to start with a great beginning to the match for Feta. So a nine. 29 for Feta. That uh, should be enough, but we need to wait for confirmation on uh, the Osarov score. Yeah, I think it will be enough. Osarov's first arrow was a 8 9 liner. I think it was probably in, but I'll still give him a maximum score of 28. So, subject to official confirmation. Looks like Feta taking a lead 2 0 in this match. Well, we haven't had many straight sets victories uh, in these championships, but uh, the Russian victory in the mixed team over the Germans was that. It's pretty straightforward. Got the feeling the Germans weren't quite in the right space. But Veta has obviously used that as a warm up. He's uh, definitely in the groove now. Two tens and a nine. So, terrific opening set for the German. And Osarov will get the second set underway and is 2 0 down. Okay. 
just a little over 10, maybe just out. <laughs> Back on form for Feta with another 10. Seven for the Russian. Eight to draw. Nine or more to win the set. And it is a nine. 28. And Veta goes 4 0 up. So a complete reversal of their previous meeting here in the mixed doubles. I think they've just never looked at that arrow. It was a, a low. 10-9 liner, so it just depends on this arrow, but oh, I mean from here I might pull it out, but I think I'd rather have a magnifying glass and be a bit closer to it. Being confirmed 10 9 8, which means you're right, better with a 28 over a 27, taking another set win and 4 0 lead. So, victory in this third set for the German will mean the bronze medal is his. So, Osarov needing to either win or draw this third set. On the nine, but that'll be a nine. So matching each other, arrow by arrow. Another nine. It's a nine to draw. A ten will win the medal. Oof, and it is a nine. So it's 26 apiece. I don't see any starred arrows. So we can go with 5 1 to Feta. And they draw that third set. German coach there with his little clipboard, so they tend to write down obviously what scored through the match, but also the positioning of the arrows as well. So they're kind of plotting the arrows and using some of that information and data. You can see it in the background now. You know, are there trends? Are there arrows that go in particular directions? Because that can help the coach you know, work out any technical problems, which they may not be able to be picked up in this match right now, but perhaps something to work on as well going forward. Well, he's smiling, and so he should be, because he's absolutely in the driving seat here and in control of this match. He is 5-1 up after three sets. A draw will be enough for Veta to win the bronze medal. For Osarov, well, nothing less than winning set four will keep him in the match. I'm not happy with that. A little bit surprised, I think, by that eight. Nine. 
Form with another 10, his third of the match. So all square. Remember, Osarov needs victory in this set. Oh, so he gets a 10. He does his absolute best, total of 28. So Feta needs. 10 to win the bronze medal and it's a nine so it's 27 to 28 and the Russian gets to play on gets to shoot on into the fifth set such a close match. See the Russian just put a bit of powder on his hand there that just helps with the execution of the shot. So his hand in his anchor point under his chin and how that moves through on execution. Now what are we seeing going on here? Um, what, 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 has, what has changed? Is, is there something that, that you've spotted here that is, is allowing the um, allowing Osarov back into it? I think they're just both shooting incredibly well. You know, you enter 28, 29. You know, this is world class shooting and uh, a fight to the end. So victory for the Russian in this fifth set. We'll see him force a shoot off. But it's got to be a victory. Because a draw will be enough for Vetter to take the bronze. Hold it a long time. Yeah, slightly longer holds, a little bit of shaking. I think he knows what's at stake here. Final arrow of the fifth set for Osarov. So a total of 26. So eight will be enough for Vetter to take the bronze medal. And it's a 10. What a way to finish. What a way to claim the bronze for Germany. And it's a celebration and a hug from his coach for the 20-year-old. Jonathan Vetter went out of the mixed team event in straight sets to the Russians. But this time he took the victory and took the bronze. But it was a great match. It really was, you know, some really high standards in there, as I say, 28, 20, 29 ends, so these guys are really shooting at the top level. The, you know, Russian already practicing his uh, execution and working on his technique already, but fantastic well, a win and a bronze uh, medal. The German <laughs> thought we were going to have a, a repeat of the extraordinary quarter-final against uh, Nicholas de Moore of the American Virgin Islands. Um, Better was leading 5-1, just as uh, happened in this match. And he saw that match in the end go to a shootout. But no need for that in the end. Uh, Buyanto Osarov put up a great fight, but it just wasn't enough to beat uh, Jonathan Vetter of Germany. And so bronze goes to the German. Now we have two medals still to be awarded. They are of course the gold and the silver in this men's individual and that match will get underway very shortly.
Now please welcome the athletes to the field of play for recurve junior men's individual gold medal match. So the gold medal match between Japan and Russia. Japan already with gold in the women's team. And Cheremiskin, the 20 year old, win the gold for Russia, their first gold of these under 21 championships. Or can Aoshima of Japan win Japan's second gold of these under 21 championships? It's been a long and entertaining week and we have come down now to the final two medals to be decided at these World Archery Youth Championships. It's the men's individual and Tetsuya Aoshima of Japan will go first. Miskin with a seven to start with. And immediately make some adjustments to his bow. A sigh of relief from the Japanese. So a great opening score for Aoshima and that's enough for the Japanese to take the first set. So this so time of day, Jemiskin. these, so these um, light conditions now, this might be the first time where the sun is starting to affect the archers potentially. You know, I think that last uh, arrow from the Russian was just an error, but he started off so far left and trying to bring them across. And as the sun comes down, it's going to change a little bit of what we call their string picture. So with recurve archery, you don't have a sight at the back. You're looking at that string and where it sits, you know, as opposed to the, the sight itself as well. So that can change a little bit as the sun changes position in the sky. It's obviously sinking down quite low now and, and that can change your left and right as well. So these archers really got to be on top of what they're seeing. Yep, early evening in Roslav right now. As we enter the ninth hour of competition on this field. Set two with Japan out in front. Neither of these archers with any major individual titles to their names. Plenty of team medals. But this certainly the highlight of both their careers. Nineteen years old, staying cool and calm or trying to. Things not going Cheremiskin's way. Oh, 
So it's another set victory for Aoshima, and that brings the score to 4 0. We've seen that score before. We saw it in the bronze medal match, and we saw the Russian come back from that. Uh, didn't quite manage to win it in the end, but we did see a fight back, and are we going to see that again from Cheremiskin? I think it happens quite often, you know, an archer gets the 4 never ahead, and then suddenly they go, oh, I might win this. <laughs> so sometimes they struggle just to, to close out the match, and we do see archers come all the way back, and again, that's the great thing about the set system, it is never over until it's over. <laughs> So third set, victory for Aoshima will mean the gold medal for Japan. student from Moscow finally gets what he's been looking for nineteen apiece third arrows Ooh, that's an eight so twenty seven that's the target. An eight to draw, but a nine or a ten will win the gold medal. <laughs> and what a time. What a time to shoot his worst arrow of the match so far. Pressure definitely got to a much longer hold. We could see him shaking, we could see the nerves. Just got to keep your brain in the present, and that's easy to say and so much harder to do when you're on the brink of a world championship. So, yeah, he's got to, got to settle himself again now. Set that reset button. Go again. So, 9, a 10, and an 8. A total of 27 for the Russian. And it was 26, a 10, a 9, and a 7 for Aoshima. So Russian with some breathing space now he can uh, get away with the drawing this set Often comes down to this last arrow between these two, doesn't it? And that's the eight. And it's an eight or more, and it's a nine, and that gives him the victory in the set and in the match. Tetsuya Aoshima. Huge smile from him, had a little bit of a wobble in the third set, 
but he came back fighting and the 19 year old has just become the under 21 world champion. What a fantastic match. I wonder if he was inspired by his compatriot, Furukawa, who took away a silver medal at the Olympic Games in Tokyo. He inspired him to go further. And will we see this young archer in Paris 2024? How many of these young archers will we see in 2024? It's just three years to go. Um, probably a bit early for the under 18s that we've been watching this week but for the under 21s how realistic a target is uh, an Olympic Games just three years away yeah I mean there's only 64 places for men 64 places for women so it's so hard to get there but we're certainly gonna see some of these archers there already some Olympians in the under 21s now and there will be a few more converted too and even some of the under under 18s you know Another three years' time, you know, some of them will be at the top of their game, winning at the highest level, and we'll see a few of those at the Olympic Games too, I'm sure. And, and would you say, what would you say the, the perfect age is for uh, an archer? When are they at the top of their game? I mean, it's a difficult question <laughs> because we've just had, uh, you know, Olympic medalists of, of all ages, really. Um, but I think statistically, you're more likely as an individual to medal in your first Olympics, and that's usually late teens, early 20s. Tetsuya, congratulations for this goal. How are you feeling right now? どうですかえっと、そうですね。今回が、えっと、自分にとって最初の、えっと、世界大会の決勝で、とても緊張したんですけど、彼って嬉しいです。uh, go to the uh, the final game, and uh, I'm very happy to win this game. <laughs> so you could have won the match in the third set. What happened? What went wrong? He could have won the match in the third set, uh, but they went into an extra one. What happened? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> すごい緊張してしまって、で、えっとまあ勝ちがすごい、自分でも分かったので、そこですごい緊張してミスをしてしまいました。And uh, third end, I'm very nervous, and uh, I thought I was going to win, so uh, I missed the shot, and so did. なんだっけ。Oh, Mr. Shimaima-san. Yes, that's it. And we just came back from the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. You're now a world junior champion. How does it feel? How does it sound to you? So, I'm not going to be able to win the Olympics in Japan. But, I'm going to be able to win the Olympics in Japan. I'm going to be able to win the Olympics in Japan. えっと、勝つことができたので、とま、また3年後のパリオリンピックに向けて、ま、いい弾みになって、ま、自分もそこで金メダル、また金メダルが取れるように頑張りたいと思います。そうですね。そうですね。あ、え、we、I'm not qualified into the uh Japan Tokyo 2020 Olympic, but uh in this uh youth championship, I could win the uh the men's individual uh, championship. So uh, this is very good result for me. I want to go to the Pali Olympic and then uh, I want to get the medal in the Pali Olympic. Thank you very much and congratulations again. Thank you. So a very happy Tetsuya Aoshima our Japanese gold medal winner in the men's uh, individual. And it's been a long time coming. His last medal was a bronze in the team event at these youth championships in 2017. So it's been a long, hard slog for him to win that gold medal and congratulations to him. Now, um, 
Nikki, we were talking about the road to uh, you know the Olympic Games and how possible and likely it is that we'll see some of these uh, juniors and cadets at Paris 2024. What is the actual process now for qualification and so on to those games? Yeah, so qualification usually happens a year before the World Championships. Um, at that World Championships, there'll be eight places for the teams um, confirmed and then there's continental qualification around the globe in the in the year of the olympic games as well so we've got all that to come in 2023 and then 2024 so our final medal ceremony getting underway now in Roslav, and it is our three individual men's medalists Jonathan Vetter, a 20 year old from Germany, who takes the bronze medal. It was his second attempt at that. He was also in the bronze medal match in the mixed team. Didn't quite make it. But that matches the women's individual bronze medal also for Germany. So for Stanislav Cheremiskin, it's silver. And that is Russia's second silver in the under 21s. They also took a silver in the, in the women's team and a bronze in the mixed team as well. So a good day with three medals for the Russians. The highest podium is reserved for Tetsuya Aoshima of Japan, claiming Japan's second gold in the under-21s, alongside the women's team, who won the very first gold of the under-21 competition, and now Aoshima wins the very last gold. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep a warm round of applause for our athletes. Pani i panowie, proszę o gorące brawa dla naszych sportowców. Yeah, you don't want to forget the official photo. Thank, thank you very much. Dziękuję bardzo. So, a gold, silver and bronze medalist here at the World Archery Youth Championships 2021 and that ceremony concludes the competition.
It's been a fascinating competition. There's been some really close ties, some high quality archery. And medals shared by a really large number of nations as well. Thank you so, so Nikki Hunt, uh, final thought from you. From yeah, it's been a fantastic championships. Um, I think what sums up is probably an invincible India taking many, many of the medals and some great youth archers coming through. I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of some of these archers who have been in the medal matches over the last two days. Absolutely. The future of archery looking very exciting indeed after these World Youth Championships. So seven nations sharing the medals in the under-21 category, with India taking three golds, Japan taking two golds, Spain taking three silvers, and Russia also taking two silvers and a bronze. So uh, Ukraine in there as well, uh, the Germans also winning medals. So a real mix of nations and ages and huge talent all round. From me, Alec Wilkinson and Nikki Hunt, it's goodbye.